Let's check out the journal. Wherever it is. Ah, wanting some alone time and fresh air, Luke excused himself, lingering in the gardens as he remembered the memory of his late mother. Suddenly, a beautiful woman appeared by his side, striking up a conversation with him. It was all pleasant at first, until... Until shit got weird. With Hana away for a checkup, Luke was left alone to watch over his godchild, Kylie Suarez. However, what was supposed to be a simple baby babysitting turned awkward when the precocious child began spouting bizarre things. That doll is possessed, I think. We're gonna find out that uh, Hana is the descendant, or a descendant, or maybe it's uh, uh, Luke, who's a descendant of these people. I don't think I can spend any more time with Kylie, considering how high-strung I feel. So it is a good thing that Suarez came for her as soon as I've called. Though it is earlier than the agreed-upon time, he voices no complaint. The bastard even has a look of relief as soon as they left. Or at least I interpret it as such from where I've stood by one of the windows, not bothering to step out and greet the man. No doubt he still doesn't trust me around his spawn. Well, he has every right to be suspicious of me. I am a dangerous man, after all. But to my chagrin, that leaves me with the rest of the day with nothing to do. Well, aside from picking up the mess Kylie left scattered about in the parlor, to my immense, immense relief, she remembered to take her doll home with her this time. But the same cannot be said of the crayons and papers littered here and there. First things first, I snatch my own doodle off the table and rip it to shreds, leaving no hope that it will be it'll see the light of day. The rest of the drawings, all Kylie's, remain unharmed as I collect the lot. Though they have been stacked neatly on the table before, they must have been blown about when I saw Kylie off. But there are plenty of them. From cats and cakes to colorful rainbows and gardens, the child managed to make a lot during her morning here. There is one more that, that I have to fish out of the fireplace where it landed. Ooh, this is gonna be... This is gonna be a thing. Expecting to see another one of Kylie's masterpieces, I am instead greeted with something a bit more... concerning. Yep, Takako! That is who Takako is. And Takako has a thing for Tio Luke. Oh gods, I have a stuffy nose. And a cat trying to rip the headphones out of my ears. Uh, there is me, and there is Kylie, the two of us side by side, and smiling as our stick figure selves stand in a nondescript field. That much I can ascertain without looking at the labels below the doodle's feet. But a third figure stands next to me in the drawing with bloody eyes and bloody clothes. A woman with her face hidden behind a curtain of black. Takako, the writing under her supplies. Takako says you're making a really funny face. Taka who? Takako, a friend I made. Why can she see the spirit? Is it because of the doll? Ooh, there's whispering. The hairs on the back of my neck stand on end, and I feel a chill go down my spine. A breath that isn't mine on the back of his neck. That's hilarious if this ghost is like trying to seduce him. You know what, Luke? This is your opportunity to bang a ghost. Go for it. Is it cheating if it's with a ghost? Let me know what you think in the comments. I am curious. That has me turning around, expecting, hoping to see someone, anyone, but nothing. And that's when I hear it. That doesn't sound like laughter, sweet or merry at all. Laughter, sweet and merry, laughter ringing from the ballroom. Thinking about it has my cheeks burning and my blood running hot. It's as if I'm being mocked. 
As I stomp towards the door, I have to stop myself from shouting up a storm. I expect to see some of the help dallying about, idle from their duties, as the working class tends to do. Perhaps they thought they can slack off in their duties without the head butler around and with my preoccupation with Kylie. Well, they had another thing coming. But again, nothing. Nothing from what I can see with a cursory glance, at the very least. I roam around looking for near impossible hiding places and still I am all alone. Yet I can still hear the laughter, that accursed laughter echoing about in the room, in my head. Who's there? Show yourselves and show some respect to the master of the house! Who has clearly already started drinking. Cold uneasiness settles into my stomach with no one answers. I stumble on my own two feet, feeling a wave of nausea come from nowhere. I have to put a hand against the wall to stay upright when the world shifts and pain explodes from behind my eyes. It takes every ounce of my self-control not to heave, then and there. The only thing my pride allowed me to do then is to close my eyes and attempt to alleviate some of the pain. Vague, unfamiliar images, dare I say memories, not mine, flash in my head, unbidden and unwelcome. Like a strong hammer strike to the head, threatening to crack my skull and split it in two. Whatever emotions they hold are muted. I'm nothing but a spectator. Jeez, it's like my dreams. I have a bunch of dreams where it's like, I'm observing something. Like watching a TV show. I don't have any interactivity in it. Still, its weight feels palpable. Though it doesn't take long for these sensations to go and get into my head, through my eyes and my ears, it creeps and buzzes in the spaces between. One after the other, they come at me, an unending flood that threatens to sweep me away from what feels like an eternity. Each one a show of both joy and suffering for those who have called this mansion their home. Each new scene is like a hammer to the head, threatening to crack my skull and split it in two. I can feel every little emotion in the blurry images that present itself in my head. I feel a part of these, like I've lived through them. Oh. Gods. Ow, ow. Wow, okay. The, I don't know what is going on with the uh, these headphones, but... Got a little, little sh jolt of electricity in the ears. It's weird. Uh, f I feel a part of these like I've lived through them, though I know that is not possible. All their anger burns through me. That much is evident, but the pain, the pain more so. And above all of it are the whispers. The voice is calling, luring, until one image merges in vivid contrast with the others. When there's a shout of joy, my eyes snap open, looking for the culprit. That's when the whole room just changes. Everything is the same, yet everything isn't. There are people everywhere laughing and dancing. I should be concerned about them, but my mind finds it easy to dismiss them as they fade in and out from nothingness. Instead, I find my concentration drawn to a man and a woman, though one can only call them a lord and a lady, going by their clothes. Oh, and just see... <laughs> just see how happy the couple looks. Though the man's eyes are eerily blank, like he's not all there, his face is familiar though. In fact, they both are. But I can't quite place it. Can't be the pictures in the foyer. No, not at all. The two make for pretty pictures they dance in the center of the ballroom. Even the Phantom's crowd's attention stay on them. It reminds me so much of Hana and I during the early days of our marriage, the honeymoon years, they call it. We were happy then, too. All smiles in her sunshine, even with the normal dreary weather. Younger, we had less to worry about, or at least thought that way. Jeez, this is not a good loop. This is... It's obvious when the loop ends and starts. It's, uh, a little weird. I thought, wished we could go on that way, even with all that I did and had to do. But life has a way of catching up. There was work to be done. Although we had to stay the loving, perfect couple in public, I could not afford to look so weak. 
to appear tied down to someone else, to those who knew who I really am. I had to harden my heart when I had business, but it hadn't always been so easy to just switch that part of me off and on. I should be concerned about their intrusion, too. Ask what in bloody hell they are doing in my house, throwing a party as if it, they own the place, these goddamn ghosts. Ask myself how the F I didn't notice what was going on before when the parlor and the foyer are both only a few doors away. But I have the feeling that yelling and screaming at them won't do much of anything anyway. None of the others have given me notice. I realize this might not even be real. It dawns on me that these two are the people from the paintings, the ones all over the mansion. Which makes sense, I don't think I'm imaginative enough to make all this up on my own. This must be a dream! Or a really horrible high. Sniffing crayons. Just then, I can feel eyes on me as I contemplate the absurdity of the situation, yet I find difficulty in trying to tear my eyes away from the two dancing. I manage, though. And I regret looking away. Ho! Oh, the woman from the garden stands beside me, but not so pretty. I can hear her rattling breath, menacing and chilling. Everything in me screams to run. But something pins me to the spot as she just looks at me, watching and waiting. The clamor of their voices fill the ballroom. Although they say such welcoming words, I do not feel comforted by the madness I'm experiencing. Their joyous voices turn sinister and foreboding to my ears. The chorus of people, people that shouldn't exist, threaten to overwhelm me, drown me even as I stand on dry land. The music still plays as the phantom quartet continues while I stand here, vulnerable and afraid that the dance has already ended. And I'm afraid I might just be tonight's entertainment. Tension is all well and good until bollocks like this go down. And these phantom people watch me, thousands of eyes scrutinizing, though they cheer for my return, conjure me to dance and join the merriment. There are eager hands all over, pulling me in every direction, but they do not move me enough to remove me from the woman's gaze. Listen. Can you not hear them as they welcome you home? Your kind? Our kind? You're one of us, my love. We are bonded by the blood we share. Hold up. Blood they share? That's a curious turn. If I thought the voices were overwhelming before, it is nothing compared to how they are now. Their voices are loud, speaking in unison and echoing ever on in the spaces of my head. They welcome me back, as if I've always belonged, as if I was meant to be here in the first place. They call me all these titles and names that do not belong to me in that man's face. The one with the empty eyes flashes again before me. Once fleetingly, like a new memory having burned itself in my mind. I have to struggle for air when I come back to myself after. I'm not. This isn't. The welcomes turn into screams at my protest. Pained, desperate pleas for my help, telling me that it is my duty to stay. Telling me that I belong among them, to them. Gentle touches turn near threatening. The warning scratches and the baring of teeth by predators before they truly maim someone. My mouth goes dry as I struggle to speak some sense in this hallucinatory madness, but I don't get the chance as they drown out my voice. Our Lord, my. At her words, there is a compulsion to stay, though my heart races in my chest the fear I should be experiencing refuses to register in my head. Mind and body war with each other, nearly tearing me in two. Oh, you finally returned to us. The compulsion to walk into her arms is strong. Whispers in my head tell me to go to her. They say that she is safety, she is home and heart. We have been waiting for so long. But repulsed at these thoughts, I wrench away and turn with a small gasp. Without hesitation, I start to make a run for it. I nearly falter with it when an angry shriek pierces the air, inhumane and monstrous. <coughs> ah, I don't dare look back, I just run. 
I didn't care if this is a drug-induced hallucination or not. Just run! Out of the ballroom. And out of the parlor. It's only then that I bother to look back, hoping and praying to the god I scorned that it did not pursue me. I would have run all the way out of the mansion too if only someone didn't get in my way. I collide with a body much larger than mine and fall back to the ground, head spinning as I look up at the stained glass. Turning my head to the side replaces the colorful sight with a pair of shiny black shoes. Fatigue fills every inch of my being then, making me refuse to get up. Meanwhile, a familiar head of ginger hair looks down at me in bemusement. You really must look where you're going if you insist on running about. Do tell, where is the fire? Oh, thank God you're here! I do hope you don't have a concussion. Can you count backwards from 15 to 1 for me? Oh, fuck off, you wanker! Just help me up! I do not think insulting me if you do have a concussion is a smart decision. But no, really. 15 to 1. That woman, she was here. I told you to keep an eye out for her. The other man offers an arm and pulls me to my feet then. But before I can storm off and pull him to the ballroom, he anchors me down with one hand on my shoulder and the other touching the back of my head. No bruising or bump. That still does not mean that you don't have a concussion. If you are too lazy to count backwards, can you tell me your full name? Where are you currently? We don't have <sighs> Lucille Mitchell Wright, and this is the Ermine God bloody fucking foyer. But we don't have time for this. You must make and have the time to make sure you are not broken in the head. Oh, he is broken in the head. I have already sent security to scour the whole house when I saw you running out of the parlor, Doomkopf. If the woman is here, they will have her. You will only be slowing them down if you plan to interfere. When he points that out, I realize there are guards starting to filter into the house as we speak with some already searching the nearby rooms. Armed and uniformed men go about in pairs, making it so that the house is in a flurry of activity. He lets go of me then, with the knowledge that I'm not going to keel over any time soon. I was hoping that you would be tired from dealing with the young miss on my return. Instead, you come running and hit your head. Such a troublesome boy. Shall I be carrying you to bed, too? I can manage just fine on my own. Though I don't see how I can sleep until that woman is caught. It'll be easier to keep you safe in your quarters. This is twice we've known the woman to break in. I think we can safely presume that you hold her interest. He says it as a matter of fact in a tone that brooks... Brooks? <laughs> brooks? Brooks no argument. Strange words sometimes. Not like I'll argue if it means I'm kept safe. The two of us hurry upstairs, though we remain watchful and wary of any potential threats to my person. We may- and they still leave the windows open. And we make it to the master bedroom without any trouble, though, and two of the security are left outside the door. No problem problems at all. Not until we get inside. Johans's eyes scan the room wildly, a look of dread on his usually stoic face. And I don't understand for a moment. Looking around the bedroom, it's empty. Then I realize... Where's Hana? She came home with you from the hospital, didn't she? She's supposed to be here. I sent one of the maids to accompany her here, to let her rest. I feel the color drain from my face when he raises a hand to stop me from charging out there. Stay. I'm not staying in here while Hana stays out there. One of the guards will find her and bring her here. And what if they don't? What if that woman gets to her first? What if she already has her? That's not possible. You can't promise that. There is no second thought as I reach under my bed, a side of the bed, and pull out one of my knives, a kitchen knife of all things. I have no doubt that the other man can take me on if we are both unarmed. But with this, I can even the field, or at least deter him from esca... <laughs> from escalating the situation and risking uh, hurting either of us. I'm going out there to look for Hana, and you're either with me or you aren't. I'm not risking Hana, and I'm not leaving her alone. Still, like a stubborn mule, he refuses to budge from the door. There's a withering look on him that I try to match, one that somehow I am losing fast to, even with him not saying a word yet. Can you see yourself in the mirror right now? 
You are in no proper state to go looking for anyone. If it will make you happy, I will do the looking. But please, and don't make me repeat this. Stay. Where it's safe, where security can find you. We already have one person to be worried about. Please don't add another one to it. Perhaps it is his tone. In spite of his general disdain for virtually everything that has to do with me, I like to think that over the years he has grown to care for Hana, at least. Uh, I wonder if this is, yeah, this is the night, I think this is the night where, uh, uh, what's his name, Ash, gets into the mansion and then this guy attempts to strangle him. Much as I loathe to admit this, I trust him with her safety over any servant in this house. So, an acquiescence. You have two hours, Shuroken. I don't think it'll take that long to find one missing woman in this house. Two hours! Any more than that, and I'm going out there. Of course. Despite his words, he lingers. If I didn't know any better, I'd say he wants to make sure I get in that damn bed and sleep before he turns away from me. What am I, a child, watching me and treating me like one? There's the reason why we will never get along. Well, what are you waiting for? And the knife? The knife stays. Very well. Only then does he seem to get the hint. With a nod, he leaves, locks, and closes the door behind him. For a moment, I still hear his voice while he gives the guards outside firm instructions, then a hush as soon as he departs, and his footsteps fade away. One that doesn't quite last. As quickly as the silence settles, lightning flashes across the sky, followed immediately by the loud boom of thunder. And that wanker strikes so dangerously close that I can feel the electricity in the air. The power goes out not a second later, and I feel as if I'm being mocked by whatever greater power there is. All is deathly still for a moment, but soon the rain starts once again. Far heavier than the light drizzle from this morning, it's pitter-patter hitting hard against the place's roof. Despite the noise, I find myself drawn to my bed, exhausted, hoping for a little nap. I'm safe here. Hana will be safe too. Shroken will find her, and when I wake, she'll be here. Does not take long. Once my head hits the pillow, in a matter of minutes, darkness claims me, bringing with it laughters and whispers of a twisted love from a time long ago, or long gone. Da da da. Uh, who are you? St stay away. <laughs> Sweet dreams, my love. It'll be over soon. <laughs> November first, Tuesday. Da da da. Yet, in spite of the unfamiliar voices and unwanted touches from shadows lurking in the dark, rousing is a slow, arduous ta er, process. Difficult, every limb heavy with lead, no matter my aversion for the words they murmur in my ears or the sight of her horrid smile from afar, my body refuses to yield. I am at their mercy. Beyond fathomable reason, my consciousness refuses the pull of the waking world, choosing to linger in the pits of a dream, gradually drawing me deeper into unknown depths. Somehow, even if it might mean I may never open my eyes, I allow them. You do not belong there, my prince. Not that I mind getting a few extra hours, of course. The bed's more than comfortable as it is after an exhausting day yesterday. Babysitting Kylie in the stress of finding an intruder in my own home. I think I deserve a little break every once in a while, especially after going through all that in a single day. I can only be on the receiving end of so many unacceptable things within the span of few hours, you know. As gracious a host and person I am, my patience has its limits too. Although there's still that problem with Hana, I haven't forgotten that, of course, but that's why I hired Shroken. He's competent enough, he won't even last a day in my service if he... If he's any lesser than those half-wits who think they can deceive me with sweet words. He's more than capable of working on his own without guidance. Let the butler take care of that little problem with Hana while I... Hana. You do not need her. I am here. We are here. This is where your home is. Where you belong. For the blood we share. 
very curious thing. Are they related? Come back to us. How long has it been since? Johans has never taken this long before. Surely there should have been an update by now, <laughs> right? So why isn't there? Bloody hell, the Cretans I've surrounded myself with. And isn't that enough reason to force myself out of bed? As it has always been the case. <gasps> Lovely! My eyes fly open, expecting the warm rays of sunshine filtering through the curtains. Only to be greeted by a blinding flash of light and a loud boom of thunder that sounded nearly too close to my ears. Strong gusts of wind will occasionally burst in from the open balcony door, bringing in drizzles of cold rain into the room. I must have left it open earlier before dozing off. The carpet on the floor closest to it is already drenched. Anna's going to be so cross when she sees this. Not that it's an immediate problem. If anything, it's this power outage we should be... Minding first. With the intruder still at large, steering through this darkness might be far more fatal than multiple stab wounds or a gunshot to the chest. Ah, oh, great. The power's still out. That is exactly what I need right now. Yes. It's this storm, of course. I should have moved back to the penthouse to weather it in a much more comfortable setting. Already, I can hear the creak and groans of this old place as rain beats against the windows. Yo, Hans! Has someone been sent to take the circuit breaker yet? No answer. Yo, Hans! Silence. Shroken! Someone! Anyone? Still nothing, and my cordial mood is quickly dissipating. <sighs> Where are those idiots when you need them? It's really a wonder why he hasn't fixed this yet. Was I really out that long? Can't be, it has only been a few hours after midnight. If the time on my wristwatch is anything to go by. Unless I've forgotten to change it again after the last overseas trip a month ago. Though the delay is understandable if he went looking for Hana as he promised. But bloody hell, my safety is also at stake here. Cursing, I stay still, letting my eyes try and adjust to the darkness while my hands fumble for my slippers. If that butler is going to fix this, I may as well order the secure or isn't going to fix this, I may as may as well order the security post outside to do it. It's probably just a blown fuse. Anyone with a brain can repair one. Grabbing my jacket, and with footwear finally on, I make for the door. Although in haste, I pause briefly when a gleam catches my eye on one of my drawers, underneath the clutter I've yet to organize, the muzzle of a gun peeks out. Hana has never Openly commented on my possession of it, but I know she does not approve of it, knowing the bloody firearms policy in this nation. Of course, I have not found much use for it in the seven years we've been together, otherwise she would have already had it thrown out years ago. Doesn't mean it won't be useful right now. Without second thought, I seize it, sending the stuff piled above it onto the floor. <laughs> eh. Whatever, it was just Hana's stuff. I'll get to it later, or make someone else get to it later. This blackout problem should be resolved first. Right next to my missing security detail, as it turns out. Where the fuck did everyone go? There were two, weren't there? Shroken had two blokes posted to stand guard for the night. I might be panicking for a bit earlier. Uh, but I'm quite sure I haven't gotten delusional yet. What, did both of them decide to take a break? Because they think the Master's already sound asleep and won't be looking for them? Damn nitwits! I know assassinations happen very rarely these days, and even less in a peaceful city like Luxbourne, but bollocks! There's been a woman going in and out of this place uninvited, who may or may not want to put a knife in my back. Isn't that enough reason to stay on alert? I'm fairly certain Shroken won't just enlist their help uh, for this power outage, only to leave me unprotected. I have a difficult friendship, so to speak, but I doubt that man is an opportunist. Holding the lives of his family in my hands, after all. What does that mean? He knows what I'm capable of doing. 
He's not stupid enough to do anything that'll endanger them and save only himself. So, where then? Only my footsteps echo a long, dark passage, and I am left gripping the handle of my pistol for some sort of comfort. Without proper lighting, and with this storm still raging outside, the stories I've heard about this place seem to have some truth to it. Some. If I'm reaching and wish to entertain myself for a bit, I'll say there might also be ghosts whispering in my ears, calling. Of course, it's just the wind and the trees outside, or the trees rustling outside. Nothing good will come out of come of allowing these thoughts to linger when problems are piling up in front of me one after another. Especially with what greets me once I get to the foyer. Though it's dark, the large windows illuminate the area much more easily than any any of the other rooms. Finally, we have caught up. And from where I stand at the top of the stairs, I can easily make out their forms, recognize them even. It's all gone crazy when these intruders come into my house. I'm no stranger to a cop playing dirty. The smart ones knew that neither life nor criminals are going to play fair. And if one of this wog's sort is in on this, I'm not surprised too. But Lily, the estate agent, she doesn't seem the sort. And Daisy, too? What will Kylie think of her Miss Pink if the poor Tyke finds out about this? Not to mention Mint. Hannah trusted her. I trusted her to be a professional. At the very least, for F's sake. To top it all off, they all have the nerve, the nerve, to look surprised when I announce my presence. Well, well, what have we here? <laughs> if I were any less sober, I'd say this is the beginning of a joke. Bloody trespassers, what is wrong with these people? Did they really think I'd be fine with them walking into my home like this? What are they even doing in here? If I didn't know any better, they might also be behind Hana's disappearance. That's right, my love. They must have a motive. And it better be a good one. Or a bullet to the head is the least all of them will deserve. Let's see. A photographer, a high school teacher, a real estate agent, an interior designer walk into a mansion. Thunder crackles once again, cutting me off. This time it's sound... It's close enough that it nearly feels as if the windows in the ground itself are rumbling. All is deathly still for a moment. I don't let it stop me, however, as I slowly make my way towards them, taking one careful step at a time, relishing the expression of fear in their eyes. I suppose there's something ominous in this setting, the heavy rain outside and the lack of light here. I kind of like it, to be honest. Adds something to the atmosphere. I suppose I must look like the villain now. Short of me getting close to them, the noise to my left distracts me, briefly halting my movements, while curiosity takes over every murmurs over every murmurs in my head, okay. And it's a good thing, perhaps, that I did, because as soon as I look up, I see him. Another trespasser. Great. Just as he's about to jump down from furniture that has somehow ended up piled and blocking the door to the parlor. What happened there? Did he really think it's alright to do that in other people's house? Lout. Teach him, my lord. Put him in his place. My hands already moving before my any rational can stop me. Fingers firm at my gun when I finally release the safety from it and take aim. Not at him, but at his friends. They are his, aren't they? Why else would they be here together? Doesn't matter. He won't let the people he cares about be harmed. My finger on the trigger is more than itching to shoot, but I hold back. Sure, I could have simply taken an aim at him. But more than seeing him bleed, I want to see the expression on his face once he realizes everything he's doing is futile. He's trapped. Lives are in my hand. His life's in my hand. Had I known there would be a party in my own home tonight, I would have opened a bloody bottle or two. People these days, in my own home, can you believe it? I feel so left out. 
I can tell the exact moment the realization dawns on him. A short second of his body freezing and blood draining from his face as soon as his feet hits the floor and he looks up. He's already a prey trapped by his own recklessness. Oh, pathetic. And really, Daisy, even you, what would Kylie say? Luke, this isn't what you're thinking. You have to listen to us. There's something going on here. Well, obviously, why else would people be trespassing in my home? What about little Lily over there, then? What's your excuse? Checking back if your clients are doing okay? Is that it? Is this what this is? Oh, we're doing good, by the way. Sir, please. Oh, please what? Becca's right, sir. We need to get out of this place. You need to- ta ta not a good enough excuse, darling. You people are the ones who need to get out of my sight. Don't worry, I might consider pressing lighter charges for the woman. Can't say the same for the rest of you. But really now? I swear the people of this city need to be taught the meaning of privacy. This is how you want to start the week. Why don't we just go with a bloody massacre if we want to surprise people in their homes, huh? It's just a passing remark, of course. I'm not stupid enough to do something that will bring negative attention to myself. Reputation and all that, I just can't risk it. The thought of having dead bodies here, ones that I'm not even responsible for, they're the ones who trespassed. It's... it's already quite too much. It's literally be o it'll little literally be overkill, especially for someone like me. Nevertheless, joke or not, Feathers wastes no time drawing his own gun at the slight wave of my own. Even if he knows it's already too late. Still, he glares at me. Still, he fights back. Now, now, Feathers. Manners. You're in no position to be pointing that gun at people. There's no desperation in him like I'm hoping, just an annoyance flickering shortly before being hidden underneath a challenge. The likes of him are the kind of people I hate the most. Even with their failures already glaring down at them, mocking every worthless move they make, they have the impudence to stare people in the eye. Why don't you put yours down first, and then we'll talk about manners. Oh, he talks back the gall! You know, your kind pisses me off so much. Annoying, most of the time, like a damn pest you can't be rid of. But to some degree, it is... commendable. I'll give him that. After all, we're almost the same in that regard. Almost. I'm still the better person, of course. He tells me to put the gun down, but I see no reason why I should. I'm a homeowner. In defense of my own home, I have the right to, I'd like to think. Questionable permit firearms aside. It's not like I wanted this. But I'm already high-strung, and their presence does not help. Bloody peasants. I can never seem to figure out how their minds fully work. Take this one, for example. Despite the pride brimming in him, how he matches my glare with one of his own, he simply lowers his pistol after a long second, not in surrender. The tense set in his shoulders tells me as much, but the closest he can get to lowering his own ego in favor of something I can't quite place. Interesting. Gotta admit, I'm almost disappointed. As you should be, my lord. I've expected him to hold until one of his, us shoots the other. Can't say it'll be more exciting that way. A bullet inside any part of my body isn't something I'd like to have on a bad day like today. Or any day, for that matter. But it'll surely predi be predictable of him. And I like predictable. They're the kinds of people who are the easiest to deal with, no matter the situation. With them, there's no second guessing what they'll do. He shoots, I shoot. One of us dies, the other walks away. Nothing complicated. Nothing requiring much brain power, just muscle memory and who's the better shooter. End of story. Yet here he is, dragging a deep breath in and setting aside the only thing protecting him. I can easily shoot him this way, be done with his this whole farce of a conversation. Instead, I find myself listening. A concession for a person who, in another life, would have also become the person I am today, had his circumstances allowed it. Damn shame. We might have gotten along. Listen, right. I need you to... But alas... You broke into my house, and somehow, somehow, you expect me to listen like a good little boy. Are you a bit touched in the head, Feathers? I'm not the one breaking laws here. 
Look here, fucker. If I wanted you dead, I could have done it so many times already. In fact, I can easily shoot you down right here, right now. And you won't be able to do a damn thing, even with that gun. A meeting of two prideful blokes will never go well, whichever lifetime it is. <laughs> and I can only laugh at his audacity, his lack of shame and fear even facing the business end of my pistol. You know what I'm thinking right now? In another lifetime, we would have probably gotten along well. The best truth I can offer him. Not many people, those who have slighted me in particular, live this long to see it. Yes, especially when he has a lot to answer. Preferably right now, because as generous as I have been so far, my patience has its limits. My amusement can only last for so long. In two steps, I'm standing in front of him, grabbing him by the collar and resting the cold muzzle of the eagle against his temple. Ashton! Luke, no! Hey, now you two, I, I'm sure we can all talk about this first. He'll end up a pretty smear on the wall this close. What is it that you people really want with me? This is the second time this week, and I'm really getting weary of this little game. Did the NCA send you to apprehend me? Or has somebody paid you off to kill me? Which one is it, feathers? Mind you, my arm's getting tired. Better answer quick if you don't want to beat the business end of this gun. And he knows it. Of course he does. Hitman or not, he has been trained, judging purely from his stance. Not many bothered to be as cautious as him. One glimpse at my handgun's safety earlier is all it took for him to see I mean business. Similar. Too similar. We're too alike in so many little ways, it's funny. Down to the fact that he doesn't even flinch, no matter how heavy the threats in my words are. Even knowing how one flick of my finger on the trigger will be enough to end his sorry life, he should have caved in by now, started begging like so many others before him. Instead, he throws more vitriol, Adds more kindling to a fire already burning. I'm not with NCA. I'm just here to help. There's something else in this house, and we're all in danger. You have to believe me, right? You need to let us go. You need to get out of here before it's too late. If you want to keep your sorry ass alive, you'll listen to people with more brain cells than you. Igniting it further that I can't help but return it to him with equal fervor. We don't need him, my love. Oh. <laughs> Why, you insolent! We both decide to move in that moment, both our bodies tensing, each of us racing to get ahead of the other. However, before we can even get a head start, a voice unexpectedly rings above the chaos about to ensue. Luke, help me. Please. <laughs> I've always been cautious and careful, cutting off Trouble's head before things can escalate if I'm able. That's why I deal with the likes of Harvey, Suarez, and Johans. For all who are, <laughs> for all who we are, for all the enemies the likes of us can make, such a thing has never happened before because I do everything to make sure it doesn't happen. So to see Hana in danger, I don't quite know how to feel or what to do. Of all the times for there to be a hostage situation, if this is even one, why now? Good effing god, what is going on in here? Help me. Please. Please make it stop. I think death would be preferable if my sense of self-preservation was shot to high hell. It would deprive me of choice and of responsibility in that matter. And I don't want to think about how fast my heart beats, so that I hardly hear anything other than my own heartbeat and her pleading. Please, they're in my head. Screaming. It hurts so much. What do I do? What can one do against someone holding your life in their hands? With a woman that looks more monster than man. When the woman's expression turns into one of amusement and her laughter fills the air, I want to call her out on it. There's a rage simmering just beneath my skin. But my own scream dies down in my throat. All I'm able to muster is a pathetic croak. She laughs as if this is all some sick joke. But my breathing becomes a bit too shallow for my liking, and I feel like I'm on a precipice where one wrong move can lead to someone dying. This is crazy. 
all of it. Luke, help me, please. I can't. And something in me snaps. There's a switch in my head that wants to go one way or the other. I have to. Oh, jeez. This is, uh, this is quite the decision. So this is the chapter where people are going to start dying. I honestly have no idea what would be the correct move in this. Uh, demand Hana's release. What am I doing? Why am I even hesitating? I won't go so far to claim that I'm any sort of decent human being, but this is Hana, my wife I'm talking about here. What sort of husband, what sort of father would I be if I just stood by idly while she was in danger? That doesn't change the fact that this is all effing insane, of course. Having all these intruders is crazy. The thing about going at this thing is crazy. I can hardly classify it as a person in my eyes. Perhaps a maggot that needs to be crushed under my shoe, just like the rest of this sorry lot, but a person? Hardly. But I care none for any of it. They don't matter. All that matters is that Hana and my children are in danger. The cold pours over me, freezes me in place once more when I try to make demands. I have to take deep breaths, grit my teeth, and steal my fist to even find the courage to speak up. Let go of her! Don't hurt her! Whatever it is you want! Just don't you dare hurt her! And if my voice isn't as firm as I'd like, it doesn't matter. I will beg and plead if I have to. On my knees, bend my effing proud neck, and maybe even break it just to make sure she's safe. It's not her life alone that is in danger. Our children's lives are on the line, even mine, perhaps. Because I don't know what I would do if anything happened to Hana. I will plead for the woman who will be the mother of my children. The cold stillness is gone from my body, and my very skin feels like it's on fire. And I have to shout, scream at her when Hana continues to cry out in pain. What do you want? Money? Is that it? I give you however much you want! Luke, please make it stop. I want it to stop. Just stop whatever it is you're doing to her! Can't you see she's hurting? I cannot stand for this. Let go of her! Now! I say it with such ridiculous conviction, and of course she won't listen. Why would she? She has the upper hand here. There is no reason for her to do as I ask. But her voice is but a whisper and deathly slow and I'm hard-pressed to hear it over the pounding of my heart in my ears. She speaks, the woman from the gardens and the servant girl from the ballroom, from the hallucination, vision, memories, whatever they were. A hush settles over the room as we listen. Do you really wish to be with her? There are no second thoughts. More than anything! So please, let her go! Though her expression doesn't change, I have this most awful feeling that it wasn't the answer she was looking for. I can see how the woman fingers tightly, how the woman's fingers tighten around Hannah's throat. I hear the hitch in her breath, and I fear that I've made the worst decision in speaking out. I didn't think she will listen, yet she does. A hand on Hana's back sends her falling down the stairs. I move to catch her, and that sends us both sprawling at the foot of the stairs. With my back to the ground and her on top of me, the pain doesn't even register in my head. All I can worry about is Hana and the baby's well-being as I pull the both of us off the ground and away from the stairs, away from her. Are you alright, Hana? Are you hurt? It takes much too long for my liking before she speaks. All she's able to do for a moment is whimper in pain, a hand to her throat. And when she does manage to speak, her voice is far too faint, along with the hold she has on my arm. It's terrifying to see her like this, and to think I nearly lost her. I'm... we are fine, Luke. I'm sorry. Just... just give me a moment. For a moment, we forget. But... You deserve each other. Just hearing her voice triggers something in Hana as she starts to tear up. Her face contorts into one of pain and fear. But I grab her by the shoulders to keep her in place so that she can see me and only me, so that I can only see her too. Look at me, Hana. Look, I'm here. You're safe. I won't let her hurt you again. Do you understand? Just breathe. 
I don't know exactly what in Bloody Hill's going on yet. I can't find it in me to care whoever these people are and whatever they're here for. These are not acceptable conditions for a pregnant woman. For all I know, this is all some dub charade to get to me. All the times I've seen the woman before, it could have all been an act to get to me, to get under my skin. And to think they dare hurt Hana. For all that the fear that I had felt seeing her touch Hana, I can only think of her as an actress in grotesque makeup. My hand still shakes, the fear not having quite gone, but anger fills me as I look at the woman, a sneer on my face. How? How dare you! I don't care who you are, but how dare you touch Hana! I want you out of my house, out before I call the police and have you put away for the rest of your miserable life! And that goes for all of you! I hold my ground firm and strong with my declaration. <laughs> The nerve of her, she just laughs in my face. A terrible, dreadful laugh that makes me feel as if there are ants crawling on my skin and maggots squirming into my ears. You are telling me to get out of your house. <laughs> you threatened to lock me up. <laughs> she laughs, and she laughs. What's so funny? What are you laughing at? None of this is funny! But she persists, and it almost feels like her voice is in my head. Oh, no different. No different. You're all the same. You can all suffer together. And that is when everything turns to complete and utter shite. Alright, well, now this looks like a good time to end this video. Next time, we will see what kind of utter shite things go to.